Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Go ahead, Chester. Oh, thank you, Chester. <laughs> well, say, who's that new girl in these kiddies over there with? I don't know, Chester. Let's go meet her. Uh, well, I'll come over there in a few minutes, Mr. Dillon. Oh. I got to give Sam some money back I borrowed off of him. Okay. Ain't much. Hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Marshal Dillon, Bella Grant. Oh, how do you do, Bella? I'm pleased to know you, Marshal. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I will. Matt, Bella's been here almost a week. Oh? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Kitty, you see, I, I've been awful busy lately. You and sure I... have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you like Dodge, Bella? Well, aside from the heat and dust, I like it fine, Marshal. <laughs> Heat and dust is about all there is to dodge, Bella. Uh, not quite all, Kitty. What? Oh, Jerry Cass again. I'll see you later, Bella. You don't mind. What would it matter? Kitty's always joking me, Marshal. Yeah, she bears watching that way. Goodbye, Bella. Bye. Tell me something, Kitty. Huh? Isn't it a rare thing to see Jerry Cass in town here? Oh, he's been coming in lately. Oh, since his pa died, huh? Well, that was three months ago. It's the last week he's changed his ways. Oh, Bella? Mm-hmm. He's real sweet on her, Matt. Well, she seems to feel the same way about it. Well, he's a nice boy, but she's running it, if you ask me. He never had a chance once she started after him. Well, I guess Jerry's never known much about women, Kitty, being raised by his pa and all. Well, he's going to learn now. Shut up. I told you for the last time. Who's that? I don't know. I never saw him before. Now get away from her and stay away from her. Starting trouble with Jerry, Matt. Yeah. Well, you knocked him down. You stay here, Kitty. You didn't have to hit him. You'll be the next one I hit. No, she won't, mister. You looking for trouble, too? Seems to me I found it without looking. You sure have. <laughs> Hey, Chester. Right here, Mr. Dillon. Get a couple of men to help you carry him, huh? We'll let him come to in jail. All right, sir. Hey, Bruni, you and Sarah, give me a hand. Bella, I, uh, I guess you can take care of Jerry. There's going to be trouble over this, Marshal. Oh, is there? Jerry will tell you. All right, I'll hear it from him when he feels like talking. This is it, L&M filters, it stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor, L&M's got everything, it's the best. No other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance. 
assurance that it is best. L and M's got everything. Superior filter, superior taste, superior filtration because of L and M's superior filter. White, all white, pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of l and superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. Buy l and today. America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it. l and filters. l and has got everything. It's the best. Claims he don't like being in jail, Mr. Dillon. Well, I can't blame him for that, Chester. He says he didn't know you was the marshal. Uh, well, what'd he have done if he had known? Try to shoot me? I didn't ask him that. In fact, I didn't feel much like talking to him anymore. Uh huh. In fact, I was getting pretty sick and tired of his sassy remarks. I. Oh, hello, Jerry. Oh, Chester. Marshal. Well, I guess he didn't hurt you very much, Jerry. I never thought he was going to hit me. Kind of took me by surprise. That <laughs> sure did. Marshal, um, I was wondering if you'd let him out of jail now. Oh? So you can go finish the fight somewhere? No. I don't want to fight him. I want to be friends with him. It's hard, but I want to try everything I can. Why, Jerry? Who is he? Why, it's Briscoe. Briscoe? Briscoe Cass, Marshal. What? My brother. Don't you know him? Your brother? I never knew you had a brother. Yeah, he come back last week. I thought you must have run into him around town somewhere. Well, I haven't till tonight. Well, what do you mean he came back last week? Well, you see, Briscoe left home now on to, oh, 15 years ago, Marshal. He's been living in St. Louis. But when he heard Pa died, I guess he figured his kid brother needed looking after. But I don't. I can take care of myself. Ah, Chester. Yes, sir. Go turn Briscoe loose, will you? All right, sir. I'm going on 25 now, Marshal. And I've always worked hard on that ranch. I wouldn't do nothing wrong there or anyplace else. Now, does Briscoe think you're doing something wrong? Oh, I shouldn't be complaining to you. It ain't your trouble. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. Go on ahead, Briscoe. Hello, Briscoe. Why didn't you say you was a marshal? Well, I guess I figured we'd talked long enough, Briscoe. That's no answer. Maybe I don't aim to give you an answer. I don't think you and me are going to get along too well. Men that act like you always find it hard to get along. I don't want no trouble with you. You don't have to have it. No, I guess you're right. There's a kid here who's got me all riled up. Him and that dance hall girl. There's nothing wrong with Bella. You mean she's pretty? Sure, she's pretty. I told you a hundred times, she's pretty. She's smart. She's a fine girl, the wonder of the world. But she works in a saloon. Well, what's wrong with that? No brother of mine's going to hang around a saloon girl. Maybe she won't be a saloon girl for long. Jerry, I'll see you dead before I see you marry that girl. You can push me only so far, Briscoe. Because I've tried to be friendly with you don't mean I'm afraid of you. I'll kill you first. Shut up, Briscoe. (laughs) Now, I've heard all of this talk I want. You two get out of here and settle this at home, but you settle it without gunplay or one of you will end up on a rope. Now, is that clear? It ain't me that's looking for a fight, Marshal. Then you're old enough to figure out some other way of handling it, Jerry. This is a family affair, and I'm not mixing in it. Unless I'm forced to. And then I'll mix real fast. Is that clear, Briscoe? I'll straighten them out, Marshal. There won't be any trouble. Well, come on, Jerry. 
Okay. Bye, Marshal. Chester. Jerry. Bye, Jerry. Uh, I declare I can't figure that Briscoe, Mr. Dillon. Jerry hasn't got him figured either, Chester. What do you mean? I'm not sure myself, but he's playing a game of some kind. And from what I've seen of him, you can depend on it's being no good. Hello, Doc. Huh? Oh, <laughs> come in out of the sun, Matt. Yeah. This is no day to be out riding horseback, Matt. I can't pick and choose when I have to work, Doc. <laughs> work, you did. What work you been doing? <laughs> well, I've ridden 30 miles since dawn. That's yeah, so you get shot at? No. Uh, shoot anybody? <laughs> No. Well, then you've done no more work than if you'd spent the time sitting here watching Front Street. Uh-huh. <laughs> you've been here all morning, I suppose. Well, I'm just settling my dinner. Oh, I ate awful heavy this noon. Uh, not me. I don't have that problem. <laughs> hello, Marshal. Oh, Miss Cullen. How are you? Doc. Oh, oh hello, Miss... Uh, what's her name? So, say, where have you been, Matt? Ah, uh, checking on a trail herd coming up from Pampa. It's two weeks late, and the owner got to worrying some about it. Oh, so you find them? Oh, they'll be here in three or four days. Well, it's a good thing you didn't wait to ride in with them. Oh, no, why? <laughs> You'd have missed the fun tomorrow. What fun? Jerry Cass is getting married. He is? Yes, he is. He announced it last night. And Bella's willing. What about Briscoe? Is he willing? Well, that's where the fun comes in. Briscoe says he'll stop it with lead if he asks him. <laughs> well, I guess it's time I got mixed up in it. Huh? What? Well, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to talk to Jerry first. Have you seen him, Doc? Well, isn't he generally over at the Long Branch uh, eyeing Bella? <laughs> yeah, I guess he is. Now, don't you go to sleep sitting there, Doc. And why shouldn't I? Because we might be needing you before the day's out. Wide awake. Like you've been herding buffalo. Oh, you know where I can get a job doing it? Everybody's always looking for a different job than the one he's got. Yeah, maybe you're right, Kitty. Oh, of course I am. But you didn't come in here to talk about that. No. I guess I didn't. Uh, Kitty, I'm looking for Jerry Cass. Oh, well, he was here. He said he'd be back in a little while. Uh-huh. I, uh, don't see Bella around anywhere. She's over at the rooming house. She won't be in for another hour. Are you expecting trouble, Matt? Well, I hear most everybody is. You know what I think? No, what? I think if Briscoe had left Jerry alone, he'd never have asked Bella to marry him. But the way things are stacked up now, he's going to go through with it whether he really wants to or not. Well, that may be, Kitty. Well... Here he is. Oh, Marshal. Ah, how are you, Jerry? Right now, I'm kind of mixed up. Well, what's the trouble, Jerry? I've been over talking to Bella, Kitty. You know what she's saying now? No, what? She says she ain't going to marry me unless I quit the ranch and move back east somewhere. Oh, no. She wants to live where it's more civilized, she says. Uh, Jerry, she decided this kind of on the sudden, didn't she? She sure did. Well, how come she waited till now? I don't know, Marshal. But I like that ranch. I don't want to leave it. What would I do back east, anyway? Well, what did you tell her? What could I tell her? She's got her mind made up. It's tomorrow we're getting married, Marshal. I'll lose her now. I don't know what I'll do. Uh, 
Where's Briscoe, Jerry? I don't know and I don't care, as long as he stays away from me. Marshal, I just don't understand it. Why should Bella suddenly start talking like this? Look, Jerry, I want you to wait here. What? I got an idea. Maybe I can find out what this is all about. Well, maybe nobody needs any money today, Chester. That ain't altogether true. <laughs> Look, uh, you wait out here, will you? Mr. Bodkin might handle easier if I go on alone. All right, sir. Come in. Well, Marshal Dillon. Come in, come in. How are you, Mr. Bodkin? Fine, thank you, Marshal. Just fine. Have a chair. All right, thanks. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I tell you, Mister Botkin, it's about uh, old man Cass, mm. Jerry's pa. You know. Well, well, I remember he was kind of peculiar in some ways, but uh, not when it came to business. I'd be mighty surprised if uh, he died without leaving a will. And uh, if he did leave a will. Well, he'd have left it with you, probably. Most people do. What's your interest in Cass's will, Marshal? Well, one is a friend of Jerry's. Two is a lawman. Well, all right. I've got it right here in my desk. Haven't gotten around to putting it back in the safe yet. There you are. Ah, thanks. You, uh, been studying it over lately, is that it? Oh, goodness, no. It's only a few sentences long. Yeah, so it is. Uh, why'd you have it out of the safe, Mr. Bucky? Yeah, well, Briscoe wanted to show it to Jerry. Why, uh, Jerry hadn't seen it before? That boy never comes to town, Marshal. Oh, well, he's been coming lately. He has? Oh, yeah. When did Briscoe first see this, Mr. Bucky? Right after his father died. He, he wrote me for a copy. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to borrow this for a little while, if you don't mind. Well, take good care of it, Marshal. <laughs> Best care it ever had, I promise you that. Thanks, and goodbye, Miss Parker. Goodbye, Marshal. Come on, Justin. Well, you find out what you wanted, Mr. Jones? Yeah, I sure did. Well, good. Look, uh, I'm going to see Bella... I want you to pick up Jerry Cass over at the Long Branch and bring him over to her room. You understand? All right, sir. I'll get him, Mr. Dillon. No other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L&M gives you superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip because when it's added to L&M's superior tobacco... It actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. No other cigarette gives you L&M's assurance, assurance that it is best. L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today.
Hello, Amo. Oh. Yes, sir, Marshal Dillon? Uh, can you tell me what room Bella Grant's in? Uh, 23, Marshal, right at the top of the stairs. 23, huh? 23. Okay, thank you. Marshal Dillon. Now, uh, leave the door open, Bella. What do you want here, Marshal? Well, I want to know why you changed your mind about Mary and Jerry. Well, it's none of your business, but I didn't. I only said I thought it over and I couldn't live on a ranch. Uh-huh. Well, that's what you told Jerry. And that's what I'm telling you. I'm not made of leather. I'm a, I'm a woman. A city woman. And I hate the country. Then why did you say you'd marry him in the first place? A woman can change her mind, can't she? You didn't change your mind, Bella. What are you saying, Marshal? Why don't you tell me the truth? Oh, leave me alone. I've got enough trouble. Uh, I got him, Mr. Dillon. Oh. oh, come on in, Jerry. Sure. Briscoe's coming, too. Oh, Briscoe? Well, he's seen us and followed us. I couldn't stop him. It's okay, Chester. I'll get rid of him fast enough. There he is. Quite a party. What's this all about? Why don't you come in and find out, Briscoe? What are you up to, Marshal? You preacher on the side, you're going to marry him yourself? Quit bluffing, Briscoe. What? It didn't work, you're all through. What are you talking about? There'd be a shooting if I told you. Now, Chester, hmm? you spend a lot of time at the depot. How soon can Briscoe get out of town? Well, the Santa Fe pulls out at half past two, Mr. Dillon. Half past two, huh? Now, you just got time to make it, Briscoe. Are you crazy? Oh, Jerry. What? Here. What's this? I don't want you to open it yet. It's your pa's will. Pa's will? i never seen this. Where'd well, you get that, Mark? I borrowed it from Mr. Bodkin. Well, Briscoe. He's lying, Jerry. It ain't pa's will at all. It's his writing... Briscoe's leaving, Mr. Dillon. Let him go, Chester. Left the ranch to both of us. But we both got to work it and live on it. Excuse me, Chester. I want my handbag. Oh, oh why, sure, Bell. And if either of us leaves for longer than four months, he loses his share to the other. Bella, where are you going? You stay here, Jerry. I'll be back. Bella! Never mind her, Jerry. You're staying here. Why? What for? You read the will. If either of you leaves that ranch for more than four months, he loses his share in it. That's what Briscoe was trying to get you to do, go back east with Bella. What are you saying? He didn't even want me to marry her. He only acted like that because he knew it would prod you into doing it. And also it would make him look innocent later, after he got you a share. Oh. Train. Let me get out of here, Marshal. I'm going after him. No. That's Bella. Come on. It's Bella. He shot her. And he got shot, too. Look at him. Bella. Uh, Bella. Uh, Briscoe's dead, Mr. Uh, Dillon. She got him from Santa. Bella. You hurt bad. He, he was no good. No good at all. Why'd you do it, Bella. I'm sorry, Jerry. You're a nice kid. I'm sorry I had to hurt you. He got me into it. He brought me here. I wanted to get out. 
after I met you. He, he said he'd kill me if I tried. Oh, Bella. He killed me anyway. Oh. Marshal? Yeah, Jerry. You had it all figured, didn't you? The whole thing. No, not all of it, Jerry. Not her loving you. Loving me? Not hardly. She was with Briscoe. She said she tried to get out, didn't she? Yeah. She kept you from killing him, didn't she? From maybe hanging for it? You were keeping me from that, Marshal. Yeah, I know I was, Jerry, but Bella didn't know it. Maybe she did love me. Well, it cost her her life. This is William Conrad. As you may know, Gunsmoke is going into its second year on radio. Now, during this time, many of you have written the makers of Chesterfield and L&M Filters, asking them to put Gunsmoke on television, too. Well, here's some good news for you. Gunsmoke is going on TV starting Saturday, September 10th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, over the CBS television network. If you enjoy our radio shows, I know you'll go for Gunsmoke on TV. Now TV will have an authentic adult western, the Gunsmoke you know. Remember, next week, Gunsmoke Radio at this time and Gunsmoke TV at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Both brought to you by Liggett and Myers, makers of Chesterfield and L&M filters. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Virginia Christine, Vic Perrin, and Joe Duvall. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smoother, cooler, milder Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you. They satisfy you. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste. How smooth they are and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Best for you. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters.